Hey guys, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well. I'm here in front of the beautiful Winchester Cathedral because today's video is going to be about the ptarmigan. And there's no ptarmigans here. However, it's quite a Christmas themed episode because I want to give you five reasons why I think the ptarmigan makes the perfect Christmas bird and should be on Christmas merchandise rather than penguins or snowy owls. But first, before I do, if you're new here and you want to learn more about animals in captivity, in the wild, or in culture be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content headed your way in the new year now let's get started ptarmigans are chicken sized birds they're part of the grouse family and in fact there are three different species of ptarmigan the willow ptarmigan white-tailed ptarmigan and the rock ptarmigan. And my first point about why the ptarmigan should represent Christmas is because it is aptly found in the north. Unlike penguins who are in the southern hemisphere, the ptarmigan is found throughout the northern hemisphere. In fact, some species are even found here in the British Isles, specifically the Scottish ptarmigan. The holiday season is known as a time of change, and the ptarmigan fits that quite nicely, for they have three seasonal plumages per year, instead of the usual two that moose birds have. They have white feathers in winter, to brown in the summer, and then gray in the autumn. This camouflage really does help them blend into their surroundings. The holiday season is also a time for eating. Let's be real, there is lots of good food to go around. And the ptarmigans also have quite the variety-filled diet. They aren't picky eaters, for they need to eat a lot to survive the harsh winters. So let's take a closer look then at the rock ptarmigan. They eat mostly plant buds, catkins, leaves, flowers, small twigs, berries, and seeds. But they also can consume spiders, insects, and even snails. Ptarmigans have quite the knack for choosing the most nutritious material that's available. And this is a necessity for meeting their high energy demands, especially in the Arctic. Each species of ptarmigan have even evolved subtle differences in their bill size and shape that is related to their main winter food source. Take this willow ptarmigan, for example. They are able to, rather unsteadily, perch in branches to eat the catkins and buds of trees and shrubs in the wintertime. This festive season is all about family, and that's true for the willow ptarmigans because the male willow ptarmigan is the only family conscious father of the grouse group, for they guard their mates closely during incubation and will even help in rearing their young, which by the way are born in a very similar way to one baby Jesus, for their life begins in a shallow nest that's sparsely lined with grasses, lichens, leaves, and feathers. Winter is a time for bundling up and staying cozy and warm, especially when you're outside by the help of good old boots. Now, ptarmigans don't wear boots. However, they do have highly modified, thickly feathered feet that act as snowshoes, meaning that these birds can even walk on top of the softest snow. Their legs too are feathered, which helps protect them from the cold this time of year, if you're able to, it is a great festively fun activity to build snowmen and make snow angels. And believe it or not, the ptarmigan does like to participate in festive activities of their own by the form of digging for shelter. Because in the Arctic, it gets cold and there are very, very gnarly winter storms up there. So to keep warm, they will use their feet to dig down into the existing snow to create a little snow hole, if you will, to shelter themselves in. Believe 
it or not, the ptarmigan has a connection to the Virgin Mary, who tends to make a lot of appearances this time of year. This folklore comes from Iceland. Now, once upon a time, the Virgin Mary called all the birds in the world to her. When they came, she ordered them to do various trials, including walk through fire. She knew that she was the queen of heaven and very powerful, and the birds dared not disobey her, and all of them jumped into the fire and waded through it, except the ptarmigan. All of the birds that made their way through the fire lost all of the feathers on their feet. And the ptarmigan, who was a bit stubborn, well, as we've seen, their feet remained feathered because they didn't go through the fire. However, they had to deal with a fire of a different kind because their disobedience made Mary so angry that she laid a hex on the bird, saying that henceforth the ptarmigan would be the most harmless and defenseless of birds and persecuted because she would always live in fear because the falcon who was her brother would henceforth hunt her down for food. Luckily, Mary wasn't completely without mercy and she gave the ptarmigan the gift of being able to change color according to the seasons. As we've seen, they change color three times in the summer, winter, and autumn. And so it's been this way ever since. Even though the ptarmigan is pretty defenseless and often persecuted, I feel like they represent the holiday season by showcasing the changing of seasons and changing their feather color to blend in with the environment. How they play in the snow by digging for shelter with their feathered feet, which act as great snowshoes. Now they're quite unpicky eaters, making the most of every opportunity they can to snack away, which oddly enough sounds like me this Christmas. If you learned something new, why not give this video a thumbs up and show the ptarmigan a little bit of festive cheer. So what do you guys think? Does the ptarmigan make a great Christmas bird? Let me know in the comments down below if I manage to convince you. I'll see you guys next Friday. Bye.